everybody, and welcome to the Made for Samsung Partner Panel. My name is Ben Selko. I lead business development for Shutterfly, and will be your moderator for today's discussion. I'm joined by an interesting mix of panelists to explain how we work together with Samsung to create value both for Samsung customers and for our own companies. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce you to our panelists. To my far left is Bethany North, Director of Product for the Weather Channel. Next to Bethany is Marcus Falk, VD, VP of Business Development for LifeSum, which is a cool life and um, um, lifestyle and health app which helps you improve your fitness habits and your eating habits. Um, next to Marcus is Jean-Baptiste Cooley, Senior Business Development Pro for Booking.com. And next to me is Brian Mason, COO for Visco, a photo editing app with a very vibrant community of photo enthusiasts. So uh, one thing you might find interesting about this panel is the range of companies represented, uh, which vary widely both by the size of the company, the industry, um, geographic location of some of these companies, and even the business model. So the hope here really is that each of you in the audience can relate to at least one of these panelists in some way, shape, or form based on your own individual experiences. So now that you understand who we are on stage, we'd love to know who you are in the audience. So very quickly, by show of hands, let's do an audience poll here. How many of you in the audience are actually developers, entrepreneurs, or marketers? Okay, we've got about, about half of them, about half of them, that's, that's pretty good. And of you who just raised your hand, how many of you are genuinely interested in working with Samsung to promote your brand, your product, or your service? Everyone who raised their hand, that's fantastic. You guys have definitely come to the right place. This is all about working together with Samsung to create value for their customers and for you guys, the developers. Now, I'm not sure why some of you some of you other people are here. Samsung employees, for example, we're not divulging any trade secrets here. So Ray, Kevin, Chris, no need to be alarmed. Everything's on the up and up here. Everything's going to be fine. <laughs> but for the rest of you, the developers in the crowd, you can expect to learn a few things from today's panel. For example, how exactly do we work with Samsung? What are the unique experiences and benefits that we provide? What are the benefits of working for Samsung? What do we, the developers and the brands, get out of the Made for Samsung program? What have we learned by working with Samsung? What, what can we share with you? Uh, what's worked? What strategies and tactics are working? Which aren't and why? Is Samsung a good partner to work with? Do they have areas for improvement? Be interesting to know from these guys. <laughs> and then lastly, what else could we possibly be doing with Samsung? What's on the roadmap? What's in the future? What are the possibilities for our companies and perhaps for some of you, the developers as well? That's the fun part. And perhaps we could um, work together on that section of the panel. So for the uninitiated, Made for Samsung is a partner program which allows developers and brands to create unique experiences and benefits for Samsung customers, um, which add value both for the customers and for you, the developer. And we, we do this across multiple platforms at, Sam, at Samsung, ranging from mobile devices to smart TVs to um, to um, digital applications, wearables, um, all across the whole Samsung ecosystem. So before we start sharing how we actually work with Samsung, I'd like to start from the beginning and take a step back. Um, perhaps, Brian, we could, we could start with you. Um, how did your discussions with Samsung begin, and what was the initial attraction? Sure. Uh, so we met, uh, actually we met Chris Joe uh, at a fight, at a professional fight. Nice. Um, <laughs> It's true. Uh, and we just started talking. Uh, uh, we've noticed on our platform we get uh, over a million downloads on Samsung devices of, for, of uh, the Visco app per month. And they're some of our most engaged and creative members uh, of our community. So looking to partner with Samsung to give them something special, honestly. Uh, uh, Samsung puts a lot of time, energy, and, and money into developing a really amazing camera. So re, what we wanted to do was really understand the camera, understand what they wanted uh, their customers to do with that, and then we wanted to support that, that creative experience. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, there's a natural attraction if you're already getting a million downloads from Samsung customers. That's unbelievable. Yeah. 
Um, Jean-Baptiste, how about you? How did the conversation start? You've been working with Samsung for a long time now. How did it get started? What initially attracted you guys to Samsung? Yes, yeah, so we've had a conversation with Chris Joe as well and uh, his team uh, about how can we partner together. Samsung is a big global brand. Uh, we have uh, large coverage in you know, plenty of countries as well in the world. We, we have an app on the Play Store. We have an app on iOS. At that time, we didn't have one on the Galaxy Store. And we thought we need to know a bit more about Samsung users. This is where the audience is very engaged around Samsung. Yeah. So for us, being there was an important starting point of the conversation. Uh, we've known each other for some time, but we really started digging into this opportunity, I'd say, a bit more than a year ago. Uh, and then we aligned on creating an, an experience specifically for Samsung users. And for us, really, it's just the beginning of uh, how can we you know, partner with Samsung, uh, progress on uh, exploring other areas of the Samsung ecosystem, which is yeah. you know, not just the Galaxy Store, but when you attend this kind of conference, you realize there's like a whole world of features, opportunities that you can uh, you know, talk about. And this is part of our uh, I don't know, daily, weekly conversation with Samsung. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I'll chime in quickly for Shutterfly. Um, Chris and Ray and the team actually called us and they said, Shutterfly, we've got a problem. We have tens of millions of Galaxy phone customers with billions of photos stuck on their phones and they want to do more with their photos. Can you help us? We said, Samsung, absolutely. We're the market leader with strong brand recognition and a very loyal customer base here in the US. We make it really easy for customers to both create and purchase personalized products through our mobile app. So it seemed like a natural value added solution for Samsung. And in terms of what attracted us originally to Samsung, I would say a couple of things. Um, one is scale. So we're actively trying to expand our Android business. We skew dispor disproportionately toward iOS, and so we're trying to build our um, Android base. And there are only a few places to go to find companies with a real large concentration of Android customers, and Samsung is one of those people. And the other thing that attracted us to Samsung was quality. And by quality, I mean a couple of things. Um, customer type and customer behavior. So Samsung and Samsung Galaxy in particular is known to attract a premium customer. So that's attracted to us because premium customers have the potential to spend more with your company. So the lifetime value of a Galaxy customer for Shutterfly could potentially be higher than the lifetime value of a typical Android customer who goes to Google Play and downloads our app. So that's really interesting for us. And then customer behavior, if you think about the value chain in photo, you've got photo capture. Samsung is best in class in photo capture and high res image quality. You've got editing and sharing through the Samsung Gallery apps. They have some great tools there, um, but they don't have a printing solution. So these customers are highly engaged. They're, they're actively um, interacting with their photos on a daily basis, and they're looking to do more. So those are very qualified customers for Shutterfly. So it was really the combination of, of quality and scale that attracted us. So my next question is actually for you, Marcus, as a, as a fellow biz dev guy. I'm always intrigued by how other companies think about new partnership opportunities. Clearly, there's a lot to like about Samsung. We love their scale, great brand, high quality. Um, is it a no-brainer? Do you just sign the contract immediately? Or are there some challenges and considerations to getting a deal done? Yeah, I think for us, it's, like, it's, it's never a no-brainer. Like whatever project we do, it has to be prioritized against something else. So it's, you know, it's always an internal discussion. I think, I mean, you guys touched upon it already. With Samsung, I mean, you get... Uh, you get massive global scale uh, and reach, which is of course important for us. Uh, then also, I mean, it's, it's all about, for us, it's all about getting our users to succeed, like give, giving them tools to make them healthier. And we have a lot of, of users on Samsung devices. So for us, it was a natural step to look at something like Samsung Health, for example. How can we make that integration? Uh, so yes, yeah, so we've been working with Samsung since, I, I believe, 2014. Uh, we started out with a, some simple project in the Nordics, and then uh, scaling that up with um, uh, Samsung Health integration, and then also looking at uh, the wearables, and now then with the uh, Made for Samsung program. So I think that for us, it's like it's definitely looking at user success. Is this helping us our users to succeed? Is this helping us uh, grow and monetize? Is the second part. And I also think with with Samsung, it's like you can get access to new technology, uh, which is not on the market yet. So for us, like we always need to innovate. 
and be able to get that, that early access, I think, is, is super useful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had um, a similar situation to Shutterfly. Before I get on to you, Bethany, um, as we were evaluating the opportunity, there were some real challenges and questions. Generally speaking, the Shutterfly team was um, excited um, and supportive of the Samsung opportunity, but it required real resources, right? We're talking about creating and man maintaining um, a separate dedicated app that requires resources. Um, roadmaps are full, development and design resources are scarce, and there could be a high opportunity cost of replacing a high profile important project with a Samsung integration that's unknown. We've never worked with them before. And then when you couple that with the fact that Shutterfly, maybe some of your organizations are, are larger matrixed organizations where you have multiple stakeholders across different functions and, and different business units, you know, getting an opportunity like this approved can be quite a daunting challenge. The good thing for us is that Samsung was really helpful through that process and they did a couple of things to help us get the deal approved at Shutterfly. The first thing Samsung did was they helped me create a business case um, to justify the size of the opportunity. We wanted to make sure it was big enough to matter. So my Samsung counterpart helped me understand what's the demand for a, an app like Shutterfly with a Samsung base. I shared some conversion metrics, revenue projections, and together we felt pretty good about a business case. And we brought that back to my team. The other thing that Samsung did to help is they provide some actual design resources. We didn't have the resources, so they really helped us map out the customer experience and make it really easy for their customers to navigate through the Shutterfly app, create and purchase um, products through Shutterfly. So I'm pretty confident that without the combination of those two things, both the, the design resources and the help in sizing the opportunity, it would, have been, it would have been a different story. It could have been much harder to get the deal done. So thanks to Samsung, we were able to do that. All right, now let's move on to the meat of the conversation today. And what are we actually doing with Samsung? So Bethany, I know you're doing a lot of interesting things with Samsung. Perhaps you could tell us about some of the unique benefits and opportunities and integrations you're doing. Yeah, so um, at the Weather Channel, we have developed a unique and very exclusive Me for Samsung app that's only available in the Galaxy App Store. Um, all of the benefits that you guys just mentioned, we take advantage of as well. Um, I think capitalizing on an audience that's super engaged, very loyal, that you find in the Galaxy App Store um, with the help of our Samsung counterparts and team has really helped us develop this uh, unique experience that a lot of our other apps do not offer to the audience. So we have um, some unique features such as a calendar sync where we sync with the Samsung uh, calendar and also Google calendar within the weather app to relate um, your weather specifically to the events that are gonna impact you today. So um, features like that, we have a smart alarm which, um, which allows the user to set and determine what weather events they wanna wake up to um, this is unique to the Samsung um, audience as well. So let's say you're, uh, you're getting ready for work, but you, uh, you, you want to wake up early if it's raining or snowing outside because you know your commute's going to be impacted. Um, it might not happen in a beautiful city like San Francisco, but um, our office is in Atlanta, and it definitely weather impacts our commute on a daily basis. So being able to wake up 20 minutes early um, to beat the traffic is huge for the audience and it's one of our um, most valued features within that app. Um, so being able to offer unique and uh, features that we collaborate with our Samsung team on to that unique audience is uh, really valuable for us. It's helped us test out features that we would have never been able to produce having not worked with the team. So it's, uh, it's been a great experience. We've been part of the program for almost three years now. Gotcha. That's really interesting, the calendar and, and the alarm. How did you come up with the ideas? Is that something you just thought of by yourselves at the Weather Channel? Was it a collaborative process with Samsung? How did that come about? So it was a collaborative process. We worked directly with our Samsung counterparts. We worked with their design teams. We did design thinking studios where we brought in um, the teams and really uh, came together over a course of a week uh, to hammer out like user needs and use cases and how we could use some of the Samsung technologies um, to innovate some of our current weather technologies. And so that's where the Samsung calendar collaboration came in. Um, that's where some of the smart alarms have come to play. Um, we're really leveraging um, useful features that the Samsung audience already uses and then putting it into our weather app in a smart, unique way. 
Thanks, Bethany. Mm -hmm. Marcus, how about you? What are some of the unique features and benefits you guys are providing through Made for Samsung? Yeah, so um, yes, as mentioned before, we've been doing a lot of stuff with Samsung over the years. Uh, so I mentioned the Samsung Health uh, integration where our users, I mean, the core focus of LifeSum is food and nutrition, uh, but exercise is an important part, uh, which we love our partners to handle. So we have a way of uh, you know, getting the data from Samsung Health into the LifeSum experience and vice versa when it comes to food. Um, for, for the Made for Samsung uh, program, we are pretty new, so like a couple of weeks, two or three weeks back. Yeah. Um, but we have done some work with the wearables. So the latest watch app that we did for Galaxy Watch is exclusive for the Made for Samsung app. And it helps um, uh, users you know, track their food on the go. So it's like just a simple tap to add your lunch. Uh, you can track water. Uh, and you can also get uh, status updates uh, for notifications on your wrist. And then we also, for, for the Made for Samsung app, we integrated uh, uh, Samsung Pay. So we have uh, the ability for users to, to use Samsung Pay. Um, and then we're also thinking about a couple of future iterations around uh, content and recipes and things like that. Got it. I'm intrigued by Samsung Pay. That's something we've considered at Shutterfly as well. What's your experience been like so far? Is that, is that new? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's recently launched. So, uh, but it's, I mean, I think it was a pretty straightforward process. Yeah. I think one good thing with, uh, with uh, Samsung is you get a lot of good uh, dev support. Uh, so we've had a constant you know, dialogue with, with, uh, with the Samsung tech teams over the integrations. And it's like they get back to you within 15 minutes. It's, it's really smooth, actually. So, but I mean, it's a, it's, of course, it's a, it's a project to get everything to work. Of course. But of now course. It's, it seems like it's working. Thanks, Marcus. <laughs> Jean-Baptiste, on, on to you with the unique uh, experiences and benefits from Booking.com. Yeah. So um, at Booking.com, we have a very strong culture about testing. So I think when we uh, launched the first version of the, uh, of the app, we wanted to test a few things that we do not have in our other apps uh, and see if that could get uh, you know, some, uh, some of the partnership going. So I mean, yesterday, we won this um, award of the best app of the Galaxy Store. But for us, that does not mean you know, the job is done. We really believe that by communicating more with Samsung like we always do, you know, we share about what else can we do. But it all started really on a brainstorm on our side about, OK, what, what can we do to start you know, testing, uh, having an app in the store, uh, collecting data, engaging with a, with a very um, you know, uh, high quality Samsung audience. The features we have today, uh, if you open the app uh, from the Made for Samsung program, uh, apart from the whole design with Samsung co-branding that dedicated to the users, one is, um, so we have a lot of uh, accommodations on the platform. You know, they change their rates and prices every day. When you look for a hotel, it's, it's changing. It's very dynamic. So we do have a lot of data around this. So we thought, OK, we're going to leverage this data. And when we see that you know, in the search results of uh, looking for a hotel today, check in today, check out tomorrow in San Francisco, we know the price of this hotel over the last you know, few weeks and how much is that uh, room based on the data we have. So we know when it's, it's an interesting deal or not. And when it is, what we surface for Samsung user is specifically a Samsung deal badge. So in the search results, you basically know when it's a, a good time to book this hotel room. So some of them would have the badge, some of them would not, but that really helped with the selection. It's dedicated to, a, to the Samsung user experience that we have. Uh, and then the other item that we have at the moment um, is also, I don't know how familiar everyone in the audience is with uh, Booking.com and the loyalty program that we have, but we have something called Genius. So every time, so after five bookings you've made with Booking.com, um, you get a 10% off on selected properties. Uh, so basically, we are um, offering a fast lane to this 10% uh, off to uh, some selected uh, Samsung users. Um, and that's, uh, those are the features that uh, we have today. And yeah, I'm not going to go into too much detail after that. But for us, it's, it's really just the beginning. We, we won this award, but for us, it doesn't mean that the job is done. We really believe that by growing this relationship, there's a lot of opportunities we can dig in. Some of the things you mentioned, I think, actually discussing all together gives, us, gives me you know, a lot of new, fresh ideas to come. Yeah. I think that's helping a lot with uh, bringing in some new ideas when we brainstorm with our product team internally, with our design team, with what capacity do we have to do something else. Can we plan it for the next quarter? Can we put it in the product roadmap? So um, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, the deal badge, I like that. And genius loyalty program, I'm sure a lot of customers like that. 
Yeah, absolutely. Ryan, uh, how about you? Yeah, so we uh, we actually launched this week, so even even newer. Um, and in when we said we figured out that we wanted to do something special for our Samsung customers in speaking with the product and marketing teams and what they had focused on. It's really the the way that the camera understands light and uh, light at different times of day. So we uh, we built this uh, the standalone Visco for Samsung app that has special filters in it that uh, either emulate or cap help capture the different lights at different times of the day. If we look at this audience, this half is in the warm gold direct sunlight of midday, which is very different than evening or morning. And uh, the, the application pays a lot of attention to that. Uh, and our business model is such that we don't sell ads or, or data. We have a subscription business. So we've, we've integrated with this subscription service that's part of the, of the Galaxy App Store. Um, and, and just like you, we found the team uh, to be really responsive and helpful as we, as we stood up you know, our third subscription service. Um, they were great to work with. That's interesting. And the lighting feature, that's not something you can find in the business. Is that unique to Samsung? Uh, the presets that, that are specifically for different, uh, yeah, that's only, that's exclusive to, to Samsung. Very cool. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so from Shutterfly's perspective, um, in terms of our marketing strategy, um, pricing and promotions are a critical part for acquiring new customers for Shutterfly. So what we did together with Samsung is we created a series of exclusive promotions, which are refreshed on a quarterly basis and are designed specifically for Samsung customers. So for example, now we're offering a free Samsung Galaxy phone case, which is a $45 retail value. Um, and also, it's a great way to protect your investment. You spend a lot of money for um, you know, a, Galaxy, a Galaxy S9 or a Galaxy uh, Note 9 phone. Um, our cases you know, are durable, lightweight, and you can personalize them, right? So it's a fun and creative way to, to express yourself, and Samsung customers love that. So um, again, what we're doing unique, there's a Shutterfly for Samsung app, and what's unique now is really the promotions within that. So rather than just um, saying explicitly, you know, these are the benefits of working with Samsung, I'd like to think about it through a different lens. What are the biggest marketing challenges facing your companies in terms of mobile marketing specifically? And how does Samsung address those challenges, if at all? Um, anyone can, can chime in. I'll take that one uh, from our end. So we, we always have a challenge, because obviously you think about uh, a weather app. Um, they're not as unique <laughs> as some of the other apps. We offer um, a great service, but as far as like competing, especially when you talk about competing in a global market, um, there's a lot of local providers that we compete with on that level. Um, so one of the benefits that the Made for Samsung program has really offered us is being able to, to get marketing promotions in these um, markets. Um, that we would not normally have the scale in. So being able to be uh, featured on the essential store within the Galaxy App Store has really helped us um, working with them on new product launches that we have so that our uh, promotions can be tailored to some of the new features that we're launching has been really, really helpful as well. Um, and, and then tailoring some of our marketing promotions around holiday and seasonal type trends that would normally you'd see spikes in weather. Um, just being able to work with that team on a regular basis to capitalize on some of those trends have been super helpful for us as well. We see a lot of uh, impact on that. Gotcha. How about you, Marcus? What are some of the challenges at, at LifeSum? I mean, it's, it's, I mean, any exposure that we can get is fantastic. I mean, it's like we, we have... Uh, uh, we grow our app through organic channels or through paid marketing. And you know, working with, with Samsung around interesting products and then also as part of that, getting exposure in Galaxy apps or through push notifications or through uh, Samsung Health, of course, it drives a lot of usage. So I think it's, uh, I mean, it's not as big as, as the other app stores for us yet, but it's definitely uh, growing our, uh, our Android uh, channels. And so we just started in the U.S. now, and uh, I'm really looking forward also for to uh, expanding this to uh, to more markets. Gotcha. Anything else to add, you you guys here, Brian or Jean Baptiste? For us, I'd say there's uh, really three things that uh, we keep a close eye on in terms of uh, metric. Um, so yes, we do have a lot of installs that come organically. So we make sure incrementality is uh, you know, one data point that we look at very closely, that yeah. all of those you know, marketing activity uh, drive incremental bookings, incremental value. And the fact that Samsung is global 
is very important here because for us, even if our brand is um, well known in, let's say in Europe, where the penetration of the brand is very strong, it is not necessarily the case in a lot of other countries. So the fact of working with a global partner helps a lot. Um, the second thing is the awareness of the brand. So linked to, the, to that, what I just mentioned, I think this is helping a lot with the awareness. And the first thing is we're not in this just to you know, have an app for a year or two, take those bookings and stop. Yeah. For us, it's really the beginning of uh, partnering with Samsung and um, being part of the Made for Samsung program is a, is a great opener to explore other areas of how can we partner with Samsung. So really incrementality, awareness, and purely from a partnership standpoint, long-term partnership. Yeah. Incrementality is always a tough one, um, particularly for, for larger companies that think a lot about that a lot as opposed to smaller companies which are really just trying to get their name out and trying to get the exposure at first. Um, it's really difficult to measure is one of the problems with the industry, um, especially through partnerships. Um, very labor intensive, it's expensive, it's hard to get the right data, you need to do randomized testing. Um, you need a lot of data points, so it's, it's always very difficult to measure, so we should talk about that later. Be curious Absolutely. to know what you guys have learned. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Yeah, so we, uh, like I mentioned, we see a nice number of downloads, and Visco has, has good awareness generally, but we launched uh, the paid membership service last year, so awareness of that premium, um, uh, the premium service is what we're working with, and so we've been working just this week with the marketing team to uh, drive awareness of the subscription service. So I'm, I'm bullish. <laughs> so um, for Shutterfly, there, there are a couple of pretty big marketing challenges that we face. The biggest one is new customers, new customer acquisition. That's true for Shutterfly overall and certainly for, for mobile in particular. You might be interested to know that mobile is um, a large and growing part of Shutterfly's business. It represents roughly 30% of the revenue for Shutterfly brand. And as I mentioned, we skew disproportionately to iOS. So um, Android and Samsung in particular represents a, a great opportunity to acquire new customers for Shutterfly. And then the other thing is um, awareness and, and discovery. A lot of people don't know about our mobile apps in particular in the Android community. So to the extent that we can help new pockets of customers um, discover Shutterfly apps for the first time and have a good impression, we feel pretty confident that if and when they, they do have a need to personalize a product, they're going to come back through Shutterfly. Um, and, and Samsung's actually been, been great in helping us uh, meet both of those challenges in a measurable way. So um, we've only been live for a few months now, but as we started looking at the orders coming through the Shutterfly for Samsung app, we noticed that a very high percentage of those order, orders were coming from new customers to Shutterfly, roughly three to four times the number uh, of orders, our percentage of new customer orders um, relative to what we see from other partners. So huge new customer percentage. And then if you think of app installs as a proxy for discovery, uh, we've been very pleased with the app install volume overall. They've been exceeding our expectations and we've only been live for a few months. Uh, we're getting into peak holiday season right now. We do about um, half of our revenue and the majority of our profits in a very small uh, window in, in Q4 around holiday season, so we're excited to see what's next. Um, on to the next one. So um, maybe, Bethany, we can go back to you. Um, in terms of key learnings, um, since you've been working for Samsung longer than, than some of us, um, what have you learned so far? What, what kind of things have worked? What haven't worked? What can you share with other developers here? Um, I would say for, for us, um, we've learned that uh, not audi all audiences from the app, like even on the Android side, are created equally. So we've uh, had to listen to our audience, and we get a lot of feedback through the Galaxy App Store. Um, and make pivots and changes based on some of the feedback and needs that they have. Um, being in tune with some of that feedback um, has been really helpful for us, especially as we launch these unique features that aren't available in any other um, of our apps. Um, I think uh, for us to taking advantage of the help that Samsung provides um, across uh, design and QA help um, has really benefited us a lot. 
Um, I know you guys mentioned having some design help. We take advantage, um, especially on a global scale, with some of their QA initiatives. So um, anytime we launch a new feature or have uh, things that we're pushing out, we can uh, leverage and work with their QA that's um, you know, global QA. So when you talk about having translations involved in that, it's really, really helpful um, given that our app supports um, multiple languages. So um, knowing your audience, and I'd say uh, being able to leverage the help that Samsung provides through like a collaboration and uh, QA has been uh, a learning process, but also really helpful to us. And, and leaning on them for that support has been great. Gotcha. So I imagine like most relationships, like there are always some challenges in working, working with a partner, things that you guys could be doing better collectively or that where Samsung can improve. Any thoughts that you can share with the audience on areas where perhaps you guys could be doing better with Samsung? I think tapping into those resources on a more regular basis would, would definitely benefit us more. Um, I know you mentioned being able to support uh, separate apps and that's always a challenge from um, from our side as we have a number of different platforms, uh, but being able to tap in and, and leverage their help uh, across some of our new features and some of our um, you know, existing features that are, that are on some of our flagship apps is, is definitely an area where we can probably improve and work closer with Samsung on, so. Gotcha, that's helpful. How about you, Marcus? Key learnings you can share with the, the audience? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, as, as Bethany mentioned also, it's, I mean, Galaxy Apps for us is a, is a new store. Uh, so I think for us it's all about like learning how we can optimize on how we sell our products through that store. It's going to be a different audience. Uh, so we also work uh, closely with, uh, with um, the Galaxy Store team on our learnings from other platforms as well. Like how do we drive conversion to premium? What type of of the upsell should we be doing and try to get that uh, to work in the same way in the, in the Galaxy store. I think, I mean, for us, um, challenges, I think uh, Samsung is a large corporation. Uh, it's sometimes a little bit tricky to navigate. So, I mean, we started in the Nordic region and then we're working a little bit with Europe and in the US and there are a lot of different teams. Uh, so, uh, you know, trying to uh, I mean, from my perspective, I'd love to, to align even more. So with this, the things that we're doing with the wearable team and uh, Samsung Health, like how do we t get that down together with, you know, Made for Samsung program. But I think actually the Made for Samsung program is a great uh, platform uh, to sort of, for us it's been, at least to connect the dots yeah. on the things that we've done before. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about doing more of that. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Thanks, Marcus. How about you, Jean-Baptiste? Um, yeah, sometimes when I think about, you know, what else um, can we do, I, I really think um, if we manage to keep growing that audience, then we we're going we're gonna to be able to explore much more uh, possibilities with user experience and things that we do on some of our core apps that have very, very large audience because we've had those apps for ages. And it's still recent. It's been a year. It's been driving a a nice number of app downloads. Uh, we see, you know, users are engaging with it, bookings. So I think one area is if we have a larger audience, we can really start, you know, A-B testing and maybe start testing, maybe changing the color of the Samsung deals bad and see if the conversion rate increase by changing uh, some things in the app. Uh, and we need a large audience to be able to do that. Otherwise, we're going to be able to get the learnings in only a year after running the, the A-B test. So if we have a very large audience, I think very quickly in a couple of weeks, maybe we can get some learnings, improve the user experience. Um, and I'd say maybe we're not there yet. I'm hoping we will be um, by, you know, growing the audience, generating more downloads. And we have a long list of activities planned to go towards that, that goal, you know, but also other countries, etc. And then the second thing is maybe about maybe a bit more intelligence on. I mean, we love data, as you may as as you may uh, you know hear from what I'm saying. But we, per device, per you know type of user, being able to understand a little bit more the the demographics, the audience, how they're engaging with their product. We have some data on our side, yeah. but maybe more on the, on the device side via the you know the user interface. Those are some things that sometimes I think okay, if we get this, we can really start driving yeah. you know, some conversation around improving based on data, based on user learnings. Uh, so yeah, that's just some of the two things that maybe come to mind. Got it, some more data to help tailor your, yeah, your messages more closely. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. 
Brian. Yeah. Uh, so as I mentioned, we just launched this week and integrating integrating with the Samsung subscription service. I know for them, it's a relatively new service, and they've they've got a roadmap, and we've been providing feedback. Uh, so it's it's new to them, it's new to us. So I think that there's there's loads of things, especially around the documentation, that I think will grow over time as more and more subscriptions come into the store. So we're eager for that, eager for more data. The more we know about our customers, the more that we can uh, um, support them, yep. target them, yep. convert them. Yep. Uh, but so far, so good. So far, so good. Awesome. Um, yeah, and for Shutterfly, I would say a couple of things. Like these guys already mentioned, it's important to, to iterate. So the first promotion that we did with Samsung just did okay. I would say I think it was five free magnets in a one large format print. It did okay. But once we came up with the phone case offer, which is a lot more relevant, uh, we noticed that conversion rates really started to go up. So it's important to continually test and learn and, and innovate. And then in terms of asking like what we would like to see from Samsung, I've got a, a couple of requests. Um, so one, one of them's a technical and one of them's a matter of a prioritization. So if the goal is to create more value for Samsung customers, we'd like to provide richer offers to Samsung customers. And one of the constraints right now is we don't have the ability to promote and distribute unique uh, single use promo codes. We're limited to using generic multi-use codes. You might see these on TV, Samsung 50. Um, and the challenge there is that anyone can take advantage of them. So we have large um, numbers of existing Shutterfly customers who would typically pay retail price or close to retail, take advantage of these free offers. And that's not the intent of the partnership. So having unique promo codes would be really helpful. And also in terms of making it easier for Samsung customers to um, create and transact with Shutterfly, We'd love to be integrated with their gallery photo app, right? So why not remove the friction? Right now, we have to put together these marketing campaigns. Um, they have to go to the Galaxy App Store, install and open an app. You know, by simply placing, placing a print button within the Samsung Gallery photo app, we can enable their customers to create and purchase personalized photo products with Shutterfly directly from that app experience. They don't have to go anywhere. We can use an SDK, and it's very simple and easy. So um, I know our counterparts at Samsung are already aware of this. I don't know if the gallery guys are here, but I wanted them to be aware of uh, our request because that would be pretty cool. I suspect Visco would be interested in something like this as well, a deeper integration. Um, so perhaps we could work together, Brian, on something like that. Um, lastly, I know some of you are doing some other things with Samsung we may have forgot to talk about or didn't mention um, to leverage the entire Samsung ecosystem. I know you, Marcus, maybe you, Bethany, if you want to talk about some of the additional things you're doing. Go for it. Yeah, sure. Uh, I think uh, the latest stuff that we're looking at now is uh, around voice. So, I mean, the big thing for us is, uh, you know, giving feedback on pe how people are eating, and then you need to track your food, uh, which is not necessarily that fun always, and it can take a lot of time. Uh, so we are experimenting quite a lot around how do we make it easier uh, for people to, to track food. Uh, so we are uh, working a little bit with the Bixby team and, and seeing how we can you know, use leverage voice for that. So we're actually running demos after this uh, around uh, 3 p.m. I think it starts uh, over there. So uh, go check it out. That's great. Um, we're working a little bit in the voice area as well. Um, we have integrated uh, weather data into Bixby. Um, so some of our uh, integrations include like a weather widget that drives back into our Made for Samsung app. Um, and it's, uh, it's really interesting being able to leverage some of the different platforms that Samsung's offering and work with the different teams within that program. So um, we, you know, we're always open for, for more uh, as part of that partnership as well. Gotcha. I'll jump in and say uh, we have a photo booth downstairs. Uh, everybody here should ha come have their photo taken. Uh, it's, a, it's a really cool experience, uh, changing background, changing light conditions. Uh, we have a bunch of uh, nice Samsung devices for people to play with, uh, and some very talented photographers down there. So if you need a good photo of yourself, come on down to the experience hall. Before we move on to QA, um, is there anything else on the roadmap that you guys have been thinking about with Samsung Pie in the Sky? Like, what, is, what are the possibilities? What could you potentially do? Um, what would you love to do with Samsung? Um, you guys have already talked that a little bit. Um, any, any thoughts around that, what the possibilities might look like in the future? Sure, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think especially given the new AI uh, challenges that you know, and, and opportunities that have really been put forth in the, the using Bixby to, to get there. I think there's definitely a lot of opportunity 
um, for, for us to integrate weather in a more real um, and exciting way. Um, we're always looking for, for those types of use cases and, and ways we can integrate more. Um, the smart things is obviously really interesting for us as well. Um, wearables, we've started doing you know watch faces and integrations with that, but I think just being able to leverage a lot of the cool technologies that the Samsung offers, um, being their weather pro partner and provider, I think is, is um, you know, we want to be at the forefront with them on those things. So there's a lot of cool integrations that uh, our, our teams are working on. Uh, voice is another one that, um, you know, being able to be the weather provider for, for Bixby and, and answering any of those questions about not just uh, what's the forecast today, but helping a user plan and have those you know, taking away that, that cognitive decision of, of trying to distinguish what is the weather and what does that mean for me, but helping point out those unique areas to where, hey, I, I know that um, I need to dress for this today, or I know I need to be prepared for this, you know, rain is when it's going to start at this time. So um, being able to make those decisions easier for a user on any platform that they're using is, is always our pie in the sky goal. Yeah. I'm intrigued by the AI at, at Shutterfly. We're using AI and machine learning algorithms to create photo products for you automatically. Just press a button and you have a product created for you. So when you think about the potential with Samsung and leveraging their AI capabilities to select the most print worthy photos, we could potentially work together and en enable consumers to um, um, create products automatically through the gallery app, for example, leveraging each other's um, AI and, and machine learning algorithms. So that could potentially be a cool uh, collaboration. Yeah. I, I, uh, Samsung TVs should have a mode where you can see the best photos of that day from Visco. Uh, we get about a million photos a day uploaded. Our machine learning algorithm pulls out the top 500 or 1,000. Uh, Samsung TVs should have a mode so you can see those every day. I love that. That's a great idea. You know what would be amazing as well? is if you start, if you're engaging with travel content, but mm -hmm. not yet with the booking for Samsung app, if you're planning your next holidays, looking at different things, being able to link that behavior to a marketing activity on the Samsung side and mm -hmm. surface yeah. relevant content based on what you've been, you know, showing user intent before. So maybe you've been looking at, you know, some weather condition right. on some articles or some, you know, what's the weather like in Arizona in general or in February or things like this. Yeah. And based on this, take that data point and surface relevant content, whether it's post browsing some weather related or photo related or travel related. Yeah. Travel takes a lot of planning. Mm -hmm. So being able to surface the right app or the right you know, way to book your travel at the right time is key. And I believe Samsung has some visibility on what's happening on the devices, whether it's uh, you know, on a TV, on a mobile device, on a tablet, yep. on a fridge, or I don't know. Yeah. Yep. On a fridge. Yeah. yeah. That would be interesting. Lots of possibilities. We have a little over 10 minutes left, so at this point I'd like to open it up to the audience to see if you have any questions for the panelists. Don't be shy. Yes. Hello? Okay, perfect. Um, so how do you make sure that you're truly increasing versus just shifting those uh, those conversion numbers or the downloads, for example, from like your flagship apps to now this Galaxy. I should probably introduce myself. So Rob Navarro with American Airlines, by the way. I'll go first. Uh, we uh, this quarter crossed two million members, uh, paid members. All the vast majority are on iOS. I'm not worried about cannibalization. I want I want Android users. So I I'm currently not worried. Talk to me in a year, maybe I will be. <laughs> As I mentioned, um, incrementality is uh, notoriously difficult to measure for all the reasons I, m I mentioned earlier. So you can never be quite sure, especially through partners. Um, it's very difficult to measure. But one proxy is the new customer percentage, which is very high through Android. So typically, they tend to be more incremental than an existing Shutterfly customer that comes to our apps directly. And the percentage of new customers coming to Shutterfly through Shutterfly for Samsung is very, very high. So. We feel pretty good that a decent number of those um, customers are incremental to our business, but you never know for sure. Yeah, I think for us, we, we look, how, does, how did it look before and how did it look after, basically? Like, did we actually manage to grow? And I think, I mean, we have uh, around 30 million members today. And it, I mean, it's a lot of people, but it's a big world. There's a lot of people out there. So to us, uh, the, you know, Samsung is a, it's a different channel. 
Uh, so it's a way of, uh, of reaching a, a, a bigger audience. And so far, we've just seen that it's, uh, it's add-ons to the regular traffic that we have from the other stores. Yeah, I, I would echo that, you know, being able to measure some of the existing numbers that we had in our flagship app and see that those are not declining, um, but that we're getting incremental um, installs from the Galaxy App Store. I think we, we've definitely seen that. But I would add that some of the feedback we've also seen as users comparing the two apps, maybe being familiar with both of them or even having both installed, um, and noticing the exclusive and unique features that we have in the made for Samsung version versus our flagship app, and preferring to go to that over the flagship version because of those unique features. And I think um, it's, it's interesting to add that. And when you start to see that feedback um, in the Galaxy App Store, it's encouraging that um, you know, those are features that are actually attracting new users. So. New bookers for us, so we check uh, if that user is a first time booker with booking.com. Uh, the, the other thing is, we've only got this app in the Galaxy Store. We don't have the other uh, like regular booking.com app. Uh, you would find it in the Play Store and iOS, but you would not find it in the Galaxy Store. So anyone who a year ago would search for booking.com would not have any content. So from that starting point, we assume you know some of it is pretty incremental. Now, some users who download it, we're still we're already using maybe booking.com in the past. The point about incrementality when it becomes a challenging one is that user is an existing one, but still, that tells you maybe he would have booked with a competitor. So that, in that case, that's still incremental. This is where I think it's a bit more difficult to, uh, to uh, really you know, put an opinion on that data point. But long story short, uh, new bookers every month would check that metric. Any other questions from the audience? Hi. Um, how do you get started? Who do you get in touch with if you want to be part of the Made for Samsung pro program? They're right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a right. there's a team right behind you. Perfect. Yeah. I'll talk to them later. <laughs> Good question, though. See, my main contact has left, by the way. I don't know what I said wrong, but. Uh... <laughs> Can you give them your mobile phone numbers? Just... They're right here. Hi. Uh, question to Marcus. Uh, in, e in terms of e-health, uh, also we have an app uh, in terms of health. Do you, do you see a future connection with Samsung Health or the Samsung Galaxy Store is an apart, uh, an apart business? Are two different models or, or will you see an opportunity to work with another tools of Samsung, Samsung's tools? Yeah, yeah. So I think we're really excited about uh, uh, Samsung Health. Uh, I mean, it's massive. It has like millions and millions of monthly active users. Uh, so I think for us, it's an interesting channel of new users. So we already have the integration, uh, so where you can you know push food data and get exercise data. Uh, I think we we speak to that team quite a lot on figuring out like what is the next thing we should be doing on the roadmap. So I think, I mean, we do food tracking and uh, nutrition and meal planning really well. And I think they are stronger on the exercise side. So to me, it's a natural uh, match. So we, I mean, we're super excited about uh, working with them. Then I think also it's, it's good to tie things together, uh, you know, with the Gal whether it's the Galaxy Store or, or something, Samsung Health. It's, it can be, you know, both. Let's say we do something exciting on Samsung Health. Maybe there is, um, we, we announce that on Galaxy Apps as well, right? So it's, yeah. Thanks. Hi. So you've talked a lot about how Samsung has helped you drive new business um, in the, an in the um, Android space. Has Samsung been, a, um, been helpful to you to retain customers as well? For us, it's pretty early. Um, we just got started a couple of months ago, so um, I don't have much to add to that, that question, but perhaps some of you have been around longer. Yeah, I, I would say that um, we see like a natural attrition of some of our um, apps. I would say the Galaxy Store users, the attrition is a lot lower for, the, I feel like they're a more engaged and lo more loyal audience to that. So with the continued promotions that we have in the store, um, it could be, a, 
attributed to that, but our retention is lower on this app than it would be on our flagship app. So we have seen, we've definitely seen an uptick in, in retention uh, for this version of our app. Anyone else? Once, twice. On behalf of Bethany, Marcus, Jean-Baptiste, and Brian, thank you all for joining us. Hopefully it was interesting and, and you learned something and enjoy the rest of the conference.